In this film, I'm interviewing Lyndon Rowland, who was a student here at Sussex in the 1980s. Hello, Lyndon. Hi, John. Now, you've done loads of things since leaving Sussex, and one of the things that I really want to talk to you about is the Report Writer. So this is a piece of software that you've written for teachers. It's free, it's on the internet, and it allows teachers to write a report. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? OK, um, basically, a friend of mine was spending all of their weekends writing reports, and I wanted to get them to come out. Um, and I was looking at what they were doing, a lot of cut and pasting, cut and, pasting and yep. so on. Um, and I thought, oh, you know, I could write a program to do that. Um, that's basically what happened. Um, I did that, and then I decided to turn it into a sort of proper website, if you like. Um, and then Google somehow found out about it, <laughs> and next thing I knew, people in Australia were using it and emailing me, and people in New Zealand, and all over the world, actually. Yeah, well, I logged on yesterday, and it looks like you had You've got over 8,000 users. You've got 50 new users a day. You've got people in Australia, New Zealand, all across Europe. Uh, it's had some amazing reviews. This is the Google Chrome app site, and it says, um, one person said, I love it. Reports, are normally, no, uh, reports that normally took me hours were a breeze to write, and yet I could still personalize the reports to each student. Uh, this one says here, fantastic program. I've just started at school and have nearly 200 students to report on. Your report writer has saved me so much time. And it's also so good to be able to load your own comments and personalize the reports to suit, uh, to suit my school and the subjects area. Well done, Lyndon. So this is really affecting teachers. I mean, it's a really useful thing. What really started you off on the whole process? What got you going? Um, I mean, you told me about the, the, the friend of yours, who was obviously a teacher, who was spending lots and lots of time trying to write all these reports. But it's, you know, you've got, theoretically, you've got this problem. Is, is it all about the theoretical challenge? OK, why did I do it? Yeah, um, yeah to be honest, I do just like solving puzzles. I've, I've always been the sort of person that, if I see someone doing something and it appears to be kind of really inefficient, yeah. um, I'm always wanting to find some way to, you know, to make some gadget or, or to make to make that better, and that's so you, that's really what drove it. It's just, just an academic exercise, really. You did science, really. Here, didn't you, at Sussex? I did psychology and cognitive science, right. um, yeah, back in the 80s, um, when the prevailing idea was very much. I mean, the first essay I wrote was "Can Computers Think?" Right. Um, it was all about the idea that somehow computers were going to kind of become conscious and yeah, yeah. so on. But it's not quite worked out that way. But the internet has revolutionized things. I mean, very quickly, I know you can, we're going to show the link at the end of this video to, to the website, but can you very briefly tell us what it does and how, you know, how it works? Um, yeah, basically, okay, just to say, I, I, a lot of the other systems that are out there allow s teachers just to sort of click on comments and put them into their report. Yeah. And actually, parents really don't like that, understandably. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what because I really want... it seems want lazy, does it? Is that what they don't Yeah, and, and, and the report's not personalised to the individual student. So really what I wanted to do was to allow them to use you know, comments that they'd created, yeah. but make it really flexible. For example, to provide a thesaurus, to allow them to set up lists of projects and so their popular phrases, things like that. We've got a slide here which might explain this. So here, you're in the program, which obviously people can work out if they go onto the website. You're writing something, but you can choose, you've got much more flexibility with your program, haven't you? Yeah, if I just explain quickly, here is the output from about four comments that the teacher's clicked on. Um, the things in colour, the name, Alex, uh, him, her, this kind of thing, these are all codes in the comments and they're automatically changed by the software. Right. And then for here, for example, with this list here, um, what, what's actually happened is the teacher has included the words are very good in their comment and the software has intercepted that and then offered them a list so that they can tailor it a lot more to the individual students. Yeah, so it's not like a rubber stamp report. They can actually, it's very flexible, basically, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. So you have, so tell me about the whole process. You have this idea, which is a dream, and then you've got to write the software, which is programming, and then you've got to get it out there, and then you've got to res respond to people using it. I mean, that whole thing must be quite nice. It is nice, uh, having all that communication and receiving a lot of emails, but I think the important thing when developing anything and what you, you quickly discover yeah. is that the actual task of making it a product, if you like, yep. is a huge way away from having, having an original idea. And I actually spend a huge amount of my time um, making it intuitive, 
making sure that I have the right words on the pages yeah, that Google yeah. likes so that people can find it, um, responding to emails from people and adding features they ask for, that kind of thing. Yeah, because basically when you write it yourself, you know everything about it. But the person using it is coming to it fresh. So you've got to try and make it so that it's, it's versatile, but at the same time easy for people to pick up. Now, one thing you talked about uh, a few weeks ago to me was this Id whole idea of security. And what's really interesting about your website is that, it, I think I might be right in saying this, that none of the children's information or details is actually sent out onto the network, is it? That's right. I mean, it's very important to me. I mean, it's obvious, really, that anything to do with children, yep. you don't want it moving around mm -hmm. and stored on servers yep. and so on. Um, so the way the site works is that the comments and other information that teachers save on our servers, nothing is, it's all anonymous. It basically contains the codes for name and other bits and pieces. And then the software itself works entirely within the browser, yep. which is good actually for two reasons. One, one, it's actually much faster because when they're actually creating the reports, there's no um, interaction no. between the, the browser and the server. It's more or less the same as just using the application you know, on their own, on their own computer. Yeah. Um, then what they do is they basically, when they finish their report, they copy the finished reports into their school system or perhaps into a Word document or wherever they want to. Yeah. And that final report is never transmitted back. Yeah, yeah, so it's completely secure and the teachers don't have to worry about information. You don't have to worry about it either, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's not really any different from a teacher just doing it within Microsoft Word or something yeah. like that on yeah, their yeah. own computer. Now, obviously, you've written this for teachers because there's an obvious need from your friend. But I've actually used it. You know, I've got a YouTube video which does really well. It's got loads of hits. And at certain times of the year, I get hundreds of emails, which are basically the same email with slight changes. So I've actually used your software for this, which was quite handy, so that I could basically not rubber stamp a reply, but I could get the basic, all the links and everything, which I'd send to everyone, but tailor it for the person. Do you think there's any other you know, uses that you could use this for? Uh, yeah, there are lots of uses. And again, I think something that's very interesting, you know, when, when you start developing something, it sort of takes on a life of its own. Mm. And I would say to people, you know, anyone who's got an idea, just sort of do it and explore it and, yep. and see what happens. Because yes, basically people use it to, to, for standard business letter replies. Um, people have suggested that I make it, you know, change it a little bit so they can use it to write CVs. Right. And, and someone actually approached me and asked me if I wanted to develop it to help them write tenders for business. Um, because in all those situations, people are, are often doing, you know, responding to requests every day, yep. but they always need to be a little bit different. Yeah, personalised them. Yeah, and, yeah. and that, this software helps them do that. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you very much, Lyndon. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jonathan.